most famous physical therapist on the internet. All right. Hi, folks. I'm Bob Shaw, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. Together, we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. Today, we're going to talk about how to walk and stand correctly and pain-free if you have neck pain or a pinched nerve in the neck. Oh, good. Now, this might seem like minor stuff, but if you walk or stand for a living, uh, you know, if you have to stand all day long, sure. th th your neck pain can get worse just from doing some of the wrong things. So we want to make sure we cover everything. Mm, let's Th find this out then. All right. Let's start off with walking, Brad. It's, you know, walking is, believe it or not, great for the spine, including the neck. Mm -hmm. It helps lubricate it. It actually acts as like kind of nature's natural balm. So balm. You know, you know what I mean by yeah. balm. I, I just I, that word always kind of catches my ear. Throws you off a little bit. It does. <laughs> so you you really it's good if you can walk for at least twenty minutes because that helps increasing the blood flow yep. and oxygen to the neck. And, and uh, when you walk, you want to walk with actually a little faster speed because that unloads the spine a little bit. Sure. And you want to swing your arms too naturally. Okay. But you don't want to walk like this, you know. Because by moving the arms, you actually do get a little bit of more oxygen. And right, and I think that's the whole idea with the spine. You're gently, the spine is right. actually rotating. It's, Good point. It's, it's experiencing subtle movements that you really can't see, but it, it's happening. And when you get that subtle movement, it's, it's not aggressive, but it's still increasing, like you said, the circulation. Now, this, too, is probably very evident to everybody, but you should start off incrementally, you know, start off, you know, a, a small distance where you don't increase the pain right. and, and move up to, you know, eventually you get to 20 minutes in. Sure. So you might start off with just going you know, to the door and back. Right. I don't know, you know it, if you don't walk. I think it's going to depend on your history, your recent history. If yeah. you've been sedentary and, and hardly walk at all, then, yeah, you're going to start with those short two- to three-minute walks or, or whatever and then build up as right. – uh, as you tolerate it without getting sore the next day. Speaking of short, you actually may want to shorten your stride. If you uh, have a long stride length and you yeah. hit the heel like mm -hmm. this, that sends a force right up th through the leg, into the spine, up into the neck. And so sometimes the shorter, shorter stride hitting on the forefoot right. um, can take some of the shock absorption. And, and I, I think, like, when I walk faster, because you mentioned to walk faster, when I – think about walking faster, I think about reaching out farther. Right. And then I'm in, they, I have to strike on my heel just to maintain balance. And that's when you get that yeah. force that you're talking about. So just more strides, shorter strides. Yeah, a little faster, <laughs> which is challenging. You know, you have to think about it. But it gives us something to think about while you're walking. The other thing is um, we're always concerned about breathing correctly. And uh, if you want to mm -hmm. try to do some relaxing breathing, we like the four square this is the one that the uh, Army uses, I believe. Um, special special, special forces. forces, yeah. So to, to calm them down, uh, four square, very simple. You breathe, inhale for four. Four, a count of four. A count of four. Or you can do three or six, you know. I think it depends on how fast you count. Yeah. Or just how your volume and your lung capacity and what your, you know, if you have a breathing issue, COPD, it's going to be a little faster sure. than, than someone who's, you know, a marathon runner, for example. Uh, but I want you to do breathe in through the nose. And the thing is, you can breathe in for, for four steps if you oh, want to. Oh, sure. Four yep. steps. Mm -hmm. Then you hold for four steps. Mm -hmm. And then you exhale for four steps. Right. And then you hold again. Right. So it it's makes the square. So it's just... It, when you breathe, uh, a lot of times people who are in chronic pain... Mm -hmm start to do that where they're holding their breath too often because sure. uh, it, yep. it's painful. They're right. Like, yep. And it, breathe, you know, breathing, uh, Brad and I are reading up on this more and more, how important it is in pain control and stress and right. so oxygenation. I, I think the other thing is either they're holding their breath because of they're waiting for it to hurt or it is yeah. painful. Or they're bracing themselves. They shallow, get shallow breathing, yes. which is Good another point. Yeah. Uh, extreme, which can be problematic for uh, – for, for pain, pain. Yep. yes. So, um, so the other thing you can do is actually when you walk is actually lock your arms behind you for a short distance because mm -hmm. this corrects posture is what I like about it. Sure. So let's say you're walking along and you grab like this and do a chin tuck yep. while you're walking. You can actually 
make sure you're in good posture, and then you can on your, head on your way. Right. Further. So you may only do that for a few seconds, but yeah. it, it reminds you, gives you a little stretch, gets you back, and it kind of resets the posture, so to speak. Very good. All right. Also, decrease any pain makers. And I, one that comes to mind is if you're trying to walk a dog on a leash <laughs> and you have neck pain, you know, this could be a problem yeah. because it's yanking on your arm. If it is, if it's a good dog, you don't right. well train. But, but you know, even a good dog, you know, a bigger dog, they see that squirrel. I've had yeah. patients saw a squirrel and jerk my yeah. arm and, uh, you know, there's uh, stress on the shoulder and the neck. And, the, you know, the neck and the shoulder, they're connected directly through musculature and, and other tissues. Yeah, when we're trying to get your neck better, you've got to really – Watch out for things like this. You may have to have somebody else walk the dog. You certainly want to compare walking the dog to not walking the dog and see if, you know, you have a lot less pain when sure, you're, when you're walking. Sure, that's a good so, point. All right. How about with standing bread? The big thing with standing bread, I don't want people to s settle in, you know. Settle in. They settle in. Yeah. They lock their knees. They, you know, everything. Gravity. Right, gravity. They, they just start. It's an inactive stand. You know, it, they're, they're not activating the muscles. Um, so don't lock your knees. It, it often helps to place one foot in front of the other. Sure. Because it, it, it's it's more of an active position. Yep. And in, so we're in a stagger. Yeah, and, and you lean forward a little bit. You know, you don't lean back. Because as soon as you lean back, that's when you start doing that posture thing. So... Uh, yeah, it's not a big lean forward, though, No, either. just a slight. Just, yeah, yeah. Just, you can feel the weight more towards yeah, your toes yeah. than on your heels. Yeah, and uh, I like the butterfly exercise for this one, Brad, is you take your hands yep. and put it behind. And, again, this is to reposition your posture and also do a chin tuck while you're doing sure. this. Sure. So emphasize you're not pulling your head forward. Yeah. I got fingertips on my yeah, back good, of the good neck. Good point. So. And it's... Again, stretches out the chest, squeezes the shoulder blades yeah. together, and when you're done, you're in good position. It's a good time to do one of those uh, before count breathing as well. Sure. So you, it helps you relax, so you stretch easier, brings out the, the chest, the diaphragm opens up. Um, you can also do the arms behind oh, like sure. this and yep. do the chin tuck too. Um, and for, I guess this is probably more of a low back one as you know, putting your foot up on a stool or something oh, for a sure. brief period of time. But still, if the low back is correct, it's going to go right up the spine and help exactly. the neck. Exactly. They're so directly, uh, you know, the old backbone's connected to the neck bone. Everything's connected, Brad. <laughs> it, it all play. And as a therapist, you see that even more true than you might be for the layperson. Right. Yeah, so. we think about it probably a little more. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, that's how we spend our days. Um, if you... Uh, this video, by the way, is a part of a series of videos ah. on neck pain. Go to bobandbrad.com, mm -hmm. go to the, the program section, look for the one on neck pain, yep. and you'll see a whole series of, of videos on neck pain. Watch well, you got to click on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah you, you can scroll down. You'll, you'll see the thumbnail, the title. Look for the title that fits your needs. You don't have to look at all the videos. Uh, you'll probably find two or three of them that fit your needs or about 10 minutes long. Sure. I interrupted. Do you want to continue? No, you oh. go ahead, Brad. You're doing great. And, and the beauty of this program series is that you find the one that you want, and you realize, oh, yeah, those exercises are good. You click on the PDF printout. It is a review, preview, uh, review of the whole thing, and it has the exercises on there. Print it out, and there you go. Voila. And the beauty part, Bob. This is, this is the real beauty part. We ask nothing in return, yep. not even an email. It's completely free. And uh, there you go. What, we just what, want good vibes coming back from you. Right. We want you to get better, feel better, and be pain-free. All right. Go check it out.